G'day, my name's Pete and ProAvia is my channel. I wanted to make a video about my aviation background, what I've done with my aviation career and how it's led me to get to this point. The first time I went flying I was 15 years old and a friend of mine took me up in his Cessna 172 and he gave me a fly and over the next few weeks I went flying with him several times and I got better and better and better at it and I loved it more and more and more and that's when I decided that that's what I wanted to do as a career. After a few weeks and a few hours of flying the 172, I learned to start, taxi, take off, fly it around and land it all by myself and I absolutely loved it. So I made it my mission from that point to join the Royal Australian Air Force and become a pilot and that's what happened. I was successfully accepted onto number 116 pilots course in 1981. Uh, I started at Point Cook I did a 10 week officer training school course with the rest of my course buddies uh, and then we got straight into flying training at Point Cook at number one flying training school. Um, the aircraft we learnt on there was the CT4A air trainer, a low wing tricycle fixed undercarriage constant speed propeller, fully aerobatic um, and it was a great aircraft to learn to fly in. Over a period of about six months we did about 50 hours each and uh, the 43 guys we had on course numbers were reduced down to about 25 people left by the time the rest of them failed and were scrubbed off course and then we moved across to number two flying training school at RAF Base Pierce just north of Perth uh, for the final 10 or 11 months of pilot training over there. So on the Mackie we flew around 120 hours on course and graduated, I graduated with my course, 13 of us in total out of the initial 43 who started and uh, we graduated in August 1982. From there my preference was to go and fly helicopters in the Air Force, that's what I always wanted to do, helicopters seemed to be my passion and I applied for number 9 squadron at RAF Base Amberley and I was lucky enough to get that as a posting for my first choice. Uh, so I went to number 5 squadron training flight at RAF Base Fairburn in Canberra and did my helicopter conversion course. I started that in uh, the beginning of 1983 and finished that and then arrived at 9 squadron around the middle of the year and commenced my operational tour there. Uh, it took me a little while to get my command because you rock up there as a co-pilot. I was flying the Huey around uh, doing all sorts of things having a wonderful time. I got my command and then that made me eligible for a posting to the Middle East. In May of 1984 I was posted to the ACMFO, the Australian Contingent, to the Multinational Force and Observers in the Sinai Desert in Egypt. Uh, I spent seven months over there flying around the desert doing various things in the Huey, thoroughly enjoyed it, it was a remarkable experience and from there I got posted back to number 35 squadron at RAF based Townsville, uh, where I continued to fly the Huey, uh, completed a weapons systems course and uh, became an Iroquois gunship captain. Spent my last 18 months at 35 Scrodden as a gunship captain uh, before I got posted out of there into a desk job in Melbourne. Now the reason I got the desk job was because the Blackhawk purchase was announced in 1987 and uh, the decision was made back then that the ownership of the battlefield helicopter would go across to the army and so the only way I'd get to fly the Black Hawk was if I transferred to the army. Now I didn't want to do that, I stayed in the Air Force and I spent two years in Melbourne at Victoria Barracks in St Gilda flying a desk. After that though I was posted off to Central Flying School at East Sale and uh, that's where I did my flying instructors course and uh, I was taught to do that on the CT4 air trainer and so after that grueling course I was posted back to number one flying training school at Point Cook as a qualified flying instructor. I spent nearly three years there teaching uh, ab initio students how to fly uh, and uh, while I was there I got to do some display flying and became the, the unit low level aerobatics display pilot. Um, I got posted out of there then in 1991 and I was posted to number 32 squadron back at RAF Base East Sale and at 32 squadron they were flying the Hawker Sidley 748. Um, 
This was my first venture into multi-engine flying and uh, that was a great experience because I got lots of IFR and multi-engine experience flying a turboprop. I spent three years at 32 Squadron flying the 748, but the last two years of that I was in training flight. As a flying instructor I was doing lots of pilot conversion courses and, and basic tra in a training position and it became a little bit tedious after a while so I was looking forward to my next posting. But uh, Air Force personnel decided in their wisdom they were going to send me to another desk in Canberra as part of my uh, officer and career development program. Uh, that didn't suit me and I didn't feel like flying another desk so we couldn't come to a compromise so I resigned in 94, got out of the Air Force and decided to come back to my hometown in Bundaberg where I bought a seafood and steak restaurant on the river and uh, thought I'd try my hand at something different to try and make my millions. And that didn't work out too well for me because I just drank too much of the profits. But anyway, after about a year of doing that uh, and realising that I missed flying and that's really what, what where my heart was, I got back into some general aviation flying. I got all my GA licences um, current and I went and got my civil instructor rating and I started doing some flying instruction in um, the late 90s through aircraft and marine services at Caloundra at the time, but I was working uh, with an aircraft, a 172, in Bundaberg. And that was good, got, my, got me back in the air and got me a bit of an introduction into how the GA world of aviation works while I was continuing at the restaurant. And um, then I had a very good stroke of fortune in um, the late 90s. I, I was down at Aircraft Marine Services at Caloundra and Chopper Line was right next door. And uh, you know they were doing lots of flying in their Robinson R22s. And I uh, was reminiscing about my days flying the Huey because it had been 10 years or so since I'd been in a helicopter. And um, I met one of the instructors there and he took me for a fly in a Robbie and uh, I, it was the first and only time I've ever flown a piston engine helicopter and uh, I really, you know, it gave me the bug to get back into the helicopter world again which had always been my passion. So that opened up a few doors for me and I managed to get a job within a week or so um, with the chief pilot of Surf Life Saving Queensland at the time, flying the squirrel up and down the Sunshine Coast beaches on weekends doing surf patrols. And uh, that was awesome because it was, you know, in a nice part of the world doing a nice job and uh, I was getting paid to do it. And what that did though was it uh, led me to some introductions with the chief pilot of the Sunshine Coast Helicopter Rescue Service. And he rang me while I was at the restaurant one day in uh, early 1998 and said we're starting up a rescue helicopter service in Bundaberg. Would you be interested in a job flying the helicopter? Uh, well, I had to contain myself and not appear too excited. But bottom line is, cut a long story short, I started work for that company on the 14th of February 1998. And... Uh, I'm still doing that job now. I've been through a fair few aircraft changes and uh, a, a merger between that company and CareFlight and then CareFlight changed their name to LifeLight. So I started there in February 98. So in February 2023, which is coming up just after Christmas, that'll be 25 years in the uh, EMS helicopter world. So I started off in a single engine jet ranger day and night VFR and progressed from there to a long ranger, to a squirrel, to a twin squirrel, to a BK-117. Uh, the BK was still only an IFR, a correction of VFR BK, but then we um, moved into an IFR BK-117 and then from there um, to um, an Augusta 109, an EC-145 and a, now we have a Bell 412. And I don't think it'll be very long before uh, the Bundaberg base will upgrade to an Augusta 139 as well. So hopefully that'll happen some stage before I retire. Um, so my flying career now has, uh, I've got not quite 9,000 hours and it's about 5,000 rotary and about 4,000 fixed wing. Uh, in 2010, 
I uh, stretched the budget and purchased a really nice Yak 52 Uniform Hotel Oscar and started an adventure flight business in Bundaberg. Uh, had that for about a year. Uh, unfortunately, things didn't work out financially and I had to sell the aircraft. Uh, but that was also an awesome time doing adventure flights with lots of paying passengers and had a lot of fun flying the Yak around, doing lots of aerobatics and spinning and stuff like that. For the last several years in Bundaberg, I've kept my fixed wing instructor rating current and I do some flying training and flight reviews in Bundaberg, but I don't really like doing ab initio or basic stuff. Uh, I work with Peace Aviation based in Rockhampton, and uh, but what I do is flight reviews and any instrument training or multi-engine initial endorsements uh, and that kind of thing, which is where I like to um, do my stuff so uh, that keeps me out of trouble and out of the pub and that's why you'll see different videos on my channel either flying fixed wing aircraft in a in an instructional role or in my EMS helicopter role where I'm one of the uh, line drivers at Bundaberg uh, I'm the base lead at Bundaberg I'm the fifth pilot that fills in for the other guys when they're on leave or they go sick at short notice we operate single pilot, IFR, NVG, and we're an emergency medical services helicopter that can be tasked to do hospital transfers, respond to primary accidents on properties, on highways, for motor vehicle accidents, or missing person searches over land or anything over water as well. So it's quite a large range of things we can do. And when you go to work for a shift, you never know what's gonna happen that day. So thanks for watching. I hope you found it interesting and I'm looking forward to posting a lot more videos, both fixed wing and helicopter stuff, trying to make it as interesting as possible in the near future.